Hello and welcome to today's video. Often I receive emails and I see also on Facebook people that asking the following question. Which are the best strings to use or which strings should one choose for his instrument? So today we are going to talk about strings. But before we can give an answer to this question, we have to go a bit back and have a look to the strings what kind of strings you can find and which are the producers and all these things. You can find strings in three different types. Gut, steel and synthetic strings and that refers to the material used to make the core. Gut strings are the oldest and they are used for maybe 1000 years now. They were around in 1500s when the violin was invented but they have been longer in use as also the viola da gamba was using them and so on. In that time the strings were just plain gut twisted. Later on they added also a metal wand as they wanted to go lower and to keep the strings thinner. Nowadays we use two types of gut strings, the plain ones and the wounded which have several layers of metal. The plain gut strings, the first type, are only used in the baroque instruments. They are also tuned one semitone lower, so they are tuned on 415 Hz instead of 440 or 42. And you won't find them on the violins, violas and cellos as we use them today. The second type, which are the wounded strings, are used on the contemporary instruments and are strings like the pirastro olive or pirastro eudoxa. But these strings have some issues, as they are very sensible to humidity and temperature they are not so easy to tune and they don't keep the tuning very well. So when you are playing you have to tune a bit more often than with the modern strings. At the beginning of 1900 the steel strings were invented. These strings are much easier to tune and they keep the tuning much better. But the sound is a bit sharp. That's why people kept experimenting and doing research and they invented the synthetic core strings. And these are the most modern strings and you see them for the violin and viola almost everywhere, for the cello a bit less. Here I have a cello string which I have cut and it's very easy to see the different layers and the core. We start by the metal core which is in the middle and then there are two layers of wire and it looks like being copper or maybe some other kind of alloy and that is secret and then the outer layer as you see there is also a very thin thread of silk between the layers which is there to protect them some strings have a single core and other ones have three or more wires that are twisted like in some pirastro and larsen strings there are a lot of string producers like Jagger, Tomastic, Pirastro, Daddario and Kirchner but also Prim, Lenzner, Optima, Varsal, Larsen and Corelli. And none of them is good and none of them is bad. There are very big differences between all of these strings, but it's not that one is better than the other in terms of quality. Some of them, like Pirastro and Tomastic, make a lot of different types of strings and also in all three kinds of strings, or at least Pirastro does, they make gut strings, like the ones I just spoke about, and synthetic and steel core strings. Tomastic makes steel and synthetic cores, like the very well known dominant strings, but also Spiracore for instance. And there are other producers that make one or two types, like Jagger, who is very well known for the Jagger blue strings, and uh, Larsen. As I said there are a lot of differences in all of these strings of all of these producers but not as much as quality but as sound. Mainly you can divide sound in four categories warm and brilliant, loud and soft. And these four categories make a very nice diagram with two axles. A brilliant sound can be a, the noise of a glass breaking and a warm sound is something like a thunder from a very big distance. Here you can see this diagram where we go from brilliant to warm and from hard to soft. In this chart you could place all the strings according to their sound characteristics. There are strings that are very brilliant and very loud. 
There are some other strings that are less brilliant but keep their sound strength and so on you go to warmer and softer strings. Some of the producers, like Tomastic, make their own charts, which you can see on their website. But you can also have a look on the internet and find a chart where all the strings are, so you can compare them between companies. And now slowly slowly we can give an answer to the question, what are the best strings? To start with, none, or all of them. But then, in the specific, the best strings are the ones that you like the most. My advice about new strings is the following. If you are playing on your instrument for now almost a couple of years and you start thinking that you are not so satisfied about the sound anymore, change your strings with new ones of the same type of the strings that are on your instrument at this moment. The chance is big that the strings are not in a very well condition anymore as they have been playing and on tension for a long period of time. Play for a couple of weeks and have a look if you are happy again. If you are, great. If you are not, then use one of the charts and try to figure out what kind of sound you would like to hear. If your instrument is too brilliant, move to a warmer sound. If it is not loud enough, go to louder strings. And so on until you find the sound that you like. In this way, the chance is big that you will spend less money to buy new strings that you will use only a couple of weeks and then throw away. Keep in mind that you need a couple of weeks for the strings to crack in and to come on tension so they arrive at their optimum result. If you don't know what kind of strings are on your instrument, have a look to the colors at the tailpiece and at the pegs. These are coded and you can find on the websites of the string producers, but also on many websites of retailers, charts with all the color codes and which kind of strings they are. So that's it for today. I hope that you have a bit better idea about strings and how to make a choice for yourself. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe so you won't miss the upcoming videos. And I will see you next time again. Bye bye.